Good morning. Thank you for taking time to join us for our worship today. Just a couple of announcements. First of all, our thanks to those who are assisting us in our worship. Our cantor this morning, Jim Gingery, lectors, Judy Thayer and Christy Bonney, and our intercessor, Jean Schmidt. Thank you for sharing your gifts with God's people today. This morning, following this liturgy, we will be in the parking lot at Trinity Church to offer curbside communion. That will be available between 10 and 11 a.m. today. And if by chance you can't get there, but you're on your way and it's a shade past 11, just text me at my phone number, 414-899-9004, and we will wait for you. So please join us if you can. And now let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion, proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. 
examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evil do doers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Over the past several weeks, the lectionary has offered us a few key vignettes from the section of Matthew's Gospel, which begins with the execution of John the Baptist. We've heard about Jesus feeding a multitude with scant resources, about Jesus walking on the water, and about his encounter with a Canaanite woman's persistent faith as she intercedes for her daughter's deliverance from a tormenting demon. The lectionary has given us a highlight reel of sorts, emphasizing the dramatic moments and kind of skipping past the intervening passages which offer insight into everything else that's happening with Jesus and his disciples as they undertake their ministry of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. For example, today's reading takes place immediately after Jesus has had yet another discussion with the religious leadership about the source of authority for his ministry. They want to know where are your certifications from? Who taught you how to do the teaching, the healing, and the exercising? The, the religious leaders ask again for a sign. Come on, show us something, Jesus. Prove yourself to us. Presumably, these leaders have heard testimonies from folks who've been healed by Jesus. Or maybe they even knew someone who knew someone who knew someone who had been delivered from a demon by Jesus. Or perhaps one of them had enjoyed the bread and fish along with the multitude on the hillside. Food which seemed to appear from nowhere, but was more than enough for everyone. All of that is just conjecture. On the other hand, the leadership's questioning of Jesus could simply be a matter of attempting to control a growing movement which threatened the leadership's control over the faithful. 
So instead of performing an on-the-spot, can't-be-denied-this-time miracle for the religious leaders, Jesus answers their challenge with a critique. You know how to predict the weather from the color of the skies, but you can't discern the signs of the times. Boom, mic drop, and Jesus moves on. Time is of the essence. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some will receive the message, others won't. But the message must be shared now, and Jesus will not be deterred from his work. And his work isn't about sitting around arguing over his identity or his authority. Then, a little while afterwards, and this is where our reading for today opens, Jesus and his disciples are away from the religious authorities. And he asked them, what are people saying about me? What's the scuttlebutt? Well, people are clearly seeing you as a prophet, like John the Baptist or Jeremiah or Elijah, the disciples reply. But who do you say I am? Now, this is a different question entirely. All of a sudden, the identity question is no longer a matter of theoretical speculation. Now it's up close and personal, literally face to face. And the identity question is wrapped up in personal experience and relationship. Who do you say I am? As Matthew tells the story, there isn't even a half a beat of silence between Jesus' question and Peter's reply. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In a flash of spirit-inspired insight, all that Peter has seen and heard and experienced comes into the sharpest of focus. Peter may have had no formal theological training, but he acted accurately reads the signs of the times. He sees, really sees, who Jesus is. And he can't keep silent. Peter's confession about the identity of Jesus is foundational to the identity of the church. And this confession reaches across time and right up until this very moment. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. That's what we say in our creed. Truth be told, I imagine some 21st century Christians, particularly of the Episcopal sort, are probably more comfortable with Jesus as a holy example or an ethical teacher, or even social justice crusader in the prophetic tradition, we're probably more comfortable with all of those images and more comfortable than with saying Jesus is the unique incarnation of God in the flesh. And I suspect that if we were to be honest, even those of us who intellectually adhere to this truth still wrestle with the implications of that assertion. In a world so fraught and fractured, where religion has been relegated to the recesses of our individual opinions, to boldly proclaim Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of the world to our friends, our neighbors, our surrounding communities, well, that sort of proclamation feels as risky and life-threatening as stepping out of a boat and attempting to walk on water. As I read today's text in preparation for this sermon, though, I noticed something that was missing in the passage, something missing that I had previously overlooked. 
Yes, Peter has his holy insight. And Jesus blesses him for it. But what we don't read about is whether or not the other disciples were as convinced as Peter was. Maybe what Peter saw in an instant took the others some time to receive as gospel truth. While Peter's confession doesn't become a litmus test for belonging, it is the bedrock upon which Christ's church will be eternally established. So permanent is this foundation that the church will outlast hell itself. Now I know for many of you who are listening, a theological statement without any sort of practical application can feel disorienting. In a world so fractured and fraught sociologically, economically, and politically, we are often more concerned about how we can make a difference right now than with reflecting upon who Jesus is to and for us. In fact, some of us may even resist the notion we can have a personal relationship with Jesus at all. Others of us may think theological reflection, which doesn't lead immediately to action, which will alleviate the multitude of societal ills surrounding us, well, that sort of theological reflection is the epitome of privilege. Saying Jesus is the Son of God in church is one thing, but what does this confession look like in the nooks and crannies of our everyday lives? In our own way, maybe we, like those religious leaders I mentioned earlier, are asking for signs instead of reading the signs of the times. I don't know where you are this morning in your own walk with Jesus. You may be looking to Jesus as an example of a good life. You may be counting on Jesus to provide prophetic inspiration as you labor for social justice. You may be hoping for Jesus to heal the pain of loneliness in your heart. You may be begging for Jesus to deliver you from the oppression of depression or fear. You may have given up on Jesus altogether but for whatever reason, you can't walk away just yet. And if you're listening to me this morning, even if you have lost your faith, take heart. The church will believe on your behalf until you can believe again. Wherever you are this morning, I believe Jesus is inviting you, inviting me, inviting all of us, and all of those with ears to hear into a journey of faith, which lasts a lifetime. Those of us who have been baptized in the faith have been called to join Jesus in a ministry which continues to change the world even when we don't necessarily see the change on the sort of global scale we'd prefer. We have been called, all of us, we have been called to share in the ministry of Jesus, to feed the hungry, to care for the poor, to confront the demonic and speak truth to power, we have been called to proclaim the loving, life-giving, and liberating power of God to a hurting world. And who we are as followers of Jesus is forever bound up in who Jesus is. He is the Messiah, the Anointed One the Son of the living God.
Let us affirm the articles of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, 
that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. G continues with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of 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 the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore.